Realizing how quickly the weather can change. Sorry, Winton. Another grand adventure with Adam's walking tours. It's not a good sign. <laughs> Found you. <laughs> We're here. The spiders can smell your fear. It's like uh, days of our lives, Vaseline screen. <laughs> <laughs> the dream life. Oh, it's good feeling all around. Two for two. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. I'm Kiara and this is Adam. A few years ago, we walked away from our life on land to pursue travel and adventure aboard our floating home, the Millennial Falcon. Last year saw us improving ourselves and the boat whilst we tackled our first Atlantic circuit. Join us as we come full circle back to the Caribbean where we will commence preparations for our next big challenge. Here's what you missed last week on sailing Millennial Falcon. We just can't rely on the weather any more than one to two days in advance, so we're working with what we've got and right now we're gonna to head to um, Guadalupe. There has been a slow crawl. <laughs> we were just feeling like, Whoa. Was it? I recovered from our sail. Well, as mentioned, we are on the move. I think our ultimate aim will be to go to the Saints because we've had a bit of a dodgy weather front going more north than us. It means that it's kind of sucked all of the energy out of the air. Amazing how quickly the weather can change in 12 hours. So what we're seeing now is the remnants of uh, Invest 90 or Invest 91 passing north of uh, St. Martin. And this is like the... What is that? What? We've uh, hoisted the outboard on the main halyard. The outboard's on the back and so I've just tied up the halyard to the back. And uh, and yeah, the wind gen's like banging on it going kick, 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 kick. <laughs> Sorry wind gen! <laughs> That's your shower for the week. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually thinking like, I've been training like this, I should go out with my towel, but check that box. <laughs> Matching plenty of water too. Yeah. Exciting as a 10 horse of power outboard. <laughs> <laughs> Although, much better for me, the environment. Just as fast, babe, just as fast. Just as fast. Remember that time it takes some cake ones, but I have to. Can't get to shore until the wind drops off a bit. It's currently 25 knots, and if we started rowing into the wind with the waves as they are and the current as it is, we'd just be pushed downwind into some rocks. So right now we can't, we're kind of stranded on a boat, we can't really get anywhere until the wind drops off and we can row ashore. And the row like, well, it's basically probably this far, if not further, yeah. but it was out. We're like figuring out which way we had to point to actually make it across the wind and the current without just drifting off the bit. Yeah, I remember. The bit going by, woefully overpriced and drastically incorrect. Out more and out of sheer desperation. Oh. 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 Time. Oh. Got the shoes again. <sighs> we haven't even left the sign yet, and we're confused as to where to go. 
This is not a good sign. <laughs> In both ways. <laughs> Now that we have a little pocket in our uh, a little compartment in our dinghy, I thought I thought to put them in there this time, but then forgot that I put them in there. We have shoes. We may have taken a wrong turn somewhere. No, you can't be there. Come on. Maybe just. Up. Well, I guess we're here. Been... No, I think keep going that way. Ah, okay. It's the best thing about being the first people in the morning to do this. That's why he's going first. Nothing! Spiderweb. What happened? <sighs> he walked me into a trap. I need a spiderweb stick. Stick of spiders? Here we go. You go, no one more. All right, buddy, move your house over there. Blow, look, look, blow out. <laughs> you know how much luck. <laughs> oh, dear. What happened? Oh, it's on my hand. This is great footage. Shut up. This is awesome. I was holding the stick and it was like attached to my hand. This bloody great God knows what spider was crawling up me. Uh, Would you like to go first, honey? Ladies first. Getting all of the best of Adam today. His butt as he walks up the hill, and then him reacting to spiders. Good stuff. Look at this view, it's pretty beautiful. The gentleman that he is oh. made me go first. <laughs> no, actually, I felt quite bad. <laughs> He's been having a bit of a rough time. We've gone like most of the way up the mountain and Adam's been covered in spiders about five, six times, so my turn. Right, which way? Left or right? Left. Left. I think you're lying when you say that this is the route. It is, I can see the path. It's just made for goats. I'm Did you very... follow me? What? Did you follow me? No, I way? went left and you went right and now I'm trapped. I have no... <laughs> I don't know how to get to you, there's no path. I should have brought a machete. This is absurd. I'm feeling like we might need to cancel the rest of this walk. There's nowhere to go. I'll try and make my way back. I at least have my stick. <laughs> I found <It's> you. <laughs> we're here. Back on track. Now we're pretty much stuck. Both both of us are now stuck in the middle of nowhere. We're committed now. <laughs> Oh look, there's a, they're crawling on my arms as we speak. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. <sighs> I can't tell anymore whether it's sweat or spiders or insects that are crawling on us. <laughs> okay, let's venture forth. <laughs> there's probably like a dumpster fire at the end of this, you yeah, know that. I think so. All right. Oh look, that looks like a big pass. Yeah. Why <sighs> didn't someone tell us to go here? Huh. Look. There we go, we found it. Another grand adventure with Adam's walking tours. <laughs> <laughs> On the bright side, I'm pretty sure the spiders in the Caribbean are fairly normal. Yeah, I think Adam's used to like huntsmen's and stuff. <laughs> oh, they're benign too, they're just like big. See? <laughs> big oh, it's fine. You mean Fred? Fred. His name was Ralph, and he lived <laughs> in the hallway of my first house, <laughs> the house I grew up in. Only in Australia you It got that. to the point where you'd come out like your bedroom and be like, oh, hey Ralph, got me again, you cheeky so-and-so. And then we're like, alright, see you tomorrow. And he'd just disappear and then he'd come back. Uh, Stop it's it! It's on you! It's on you! I have to get through this spider's nest to come and deal with your spider's nest. Go back into the clearing. Go, go. I don't know go, go. Oh, God. This was <laughs> There's one there. Ah! No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Stop screaming! <laughs> the spiders can smell your fear. Alright, just turn, turn around. <sighs> okay, I think you're fine. I think your crazy chicken dancers got rid of all the. 
Okay, crack on. You're doing great. You know the worst thing is, we have to come back down. Oh, well, the spots are cleared away now. I'm such like a manly girl when it comes to like boat work and all this stuff. I, I'll go anywhere. But then when it comes to spiders, I'm like, ah! <laughs> That's it. That's got to be it. All right. Oh, 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 he's guarding the The gatekeeper. Path. The final boss. All right. This is what we came up here for. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Wee. If it's not the best view, then I'd better film you saying it. it's the best view. It's the best view. <laughs> All right, we're gonna switch to the action cam because this is gonna be a run on the way down, I think. What, a run? Are just gonna run through the spiders? Yes. You're mad. Uh, I've already been bitten twice. Yeah, actually, Adam's got them bitten twice. You better look up what the spiders are like here. <laughs> How's that for a morning walk? Yeah, got my steps in. Can I show people our, um, our mooring set up for her? Yeah, sure. Pretty much in the French islands, these types of mooring balls are like really common. It's kind of like a, a line chafing metal ring on the top. Um, and we know this because it has chafed through our lines before, like several lines at one time. So what we've done is instead of tying off lines and putting like, usually you'd put uh, one line that goes from a cleat through the ring and then back to the very same cleat and you'd do the same on the other side. So rather than having two of them on the boat, we've actually used a, an anchor shackle on the snubber and tied off to the metal thing. So you've got metal on metal, no chafing. So you come in, you just pick it up with a single line through the loop and then once you put your dinghy in and you're ready to like settle in, you do what I'm about to do, you scooch forward and you do the shackle and then you hoik it up through your bow roller, lift the mooring out of the water so that it cannot swing around and, and the boat can't sail onto it in a calm. And then you're pretty well about as solid as you can be. I think that's about it. Yeah, the trick is to hoist it up out of the water, like when it's calm, Anybody who's spent a decent amount of time in a mooring will know that it's like bang, 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 bang all night on the side of your hull. Which is not the end of the world if it's just a plastic mooring with a you know, triple braid line coming out. But when it's got these huge metal rings on it, like banging, like tapping a metal ring on the side of your hull all night puts some nasty chinks in it. Um, and so this sort of circumvents that because when it's calm, you've hoisted the mooring out of the water. And so the actual ball and the ring cannot actually reach the hull provided you've got a decent overhang on your bow. Um, and then also on top of that, by using the shackle, you prevent the, the chafe and the rubbing. There's other ways to prevent that, but this is sort of a nice hybrid. Huh? What you doing there, champ? <laughs> Just sanding the GoPro, the usual. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but uh, last week we mentioned that. The GoPro started fogging up halfway there, which is really annoying. Um, and cleaning it with a with a bunch of leaves surprisingly <laughs> did not work and uh, and so I'm just trying to like sand one of the GoPros down so that we can fit it into another of our waterproof cases yeah long story short um, leaves to clean the lenses do not work so we're just trying to find a good method we're gonna go for a swim and take the GoPros with us and I don't want it like oh, there's just such beautiful stuff under under the water and it's such a waste not to have a camera to film it. There is nothing more annoying than like taking what, what appears, you know, you get your breath hold, you get down to 30 feet or whatever, you line it up, the fish is there and they're performing, everything's perfect. And then you look at the viewfinder and it's just this foggy blur. Yeah. It's like a Days of Our Lives Vaseline screen <laughs> kind of deal. It's the it's dream life. Nothing, actually yeah, not. nothing more annoying than getting home to realize that the great shot you thought you'd taken is like Days of Our Lives Vaseline screen. We yeah. should probably explain why we're going for a swim. Um, and to explain that, I'll show you our fridge. We are seriously low on food. 
We went into town and uh, <laughs> we managed to pick up a whopping three onions, a quarter of a piece of um, pumpkin and... what else? So pretty sure it was it. A couple oh of potatoes. Sweet potatoes. And, and some dirty sweet potatoes. Um, and I was like, man, I'm, I'm really, really going to have to like get creative here. I really, I'm not sure. So in order to pluff out our, our food that we have, we're thinking about going for a nice spearfish. Um, because, you know, you can have like potatoes and fresh fish and all of a sudden you're like, ooh, what an exciting meal. Whereas when it's like potatoes and some canned beans, that's really tragic. That's really tragic. And I would know because we just had that last night. <laughs> <laughs> so our, our, our task for the day is to try to make our meager provisions a little more exciting. That's kind of right. It's like an aquarium down here. Like beautiful, but so many little fish. Really, really big <laughs> flying fish. Not worth eating. There's a decent one in there. Hey? There's a decent one there too. Ah, cool. I might try to shoot the good one. Ocean. There's nothing between here and Cape Verde, Africa. Crazy when you think about it like that. Yeah, no wonder there is a current. Two lionfish, not bad. Not bad size actually. Um, they're a bit like shooting fish in a barrel. It feels like you're cheating because they're possibly the least evolved <laughs> fight or flight fish I've ever witnessed. They just kind of sit there and look at you and if you miss they just move slightly to the side and then wait for the next shot. They're I guess it's because they have no natural predators, which is why they're an invasive sort of endemic species. Um, but yeah, they're like shooting fish in a barrel. But they're pretty good eating, I think. And uh, apart from cutting off the spines, they're not that hard to prepare. So, And nobody will ever begrudge you for nailing a few lionfish. Um, so yeah, it's a good feeling all around, two for two. <laughs> It's hot. Sitting in the sunny bits. It's really, really hot. Ah, back on the boat. Um, Adam's just cutting all of the spines and stuff off of the lionfish. So, for those of you who don't know, lionfish are quite poisonous um, and they have these spikes on the back that are quite poisonous to humans as well. So, Adam's just cutting them off with some scissors and then we can handle the fish um, and be able to cook it. I'm thinking a barbecue with our dirty potatoes. We'll I'll maybe make some wedges or something, like some sweet potato fries. I think that's gonna be the plan for our, for our catch. And when I say our catch, I mean solely Adam's catch. Beautiful snorkeling, absolutely stunning. There were more lionfish than we could count. Um, and it's just a shame that you know we can't catch them all. Um, but if anybody else wants to come and go get some of their lionfish hunting on, the Saints is the place to do it, apparently. <laughs> it's quite good. Um, yeah, nice day, nice morning of snorkeling. It's really lovely. Ah, all right, here they are. Hello. They have been pre-prepared. Adam has removed all of the guts and the grime and the, all that stuff. What flavor should we have with them? 
Right. We did like really uh, nice butter garlic last time, which was quite yeah, nice. Yeah, that did work well. Just butter with everything just goes so well. Garlic too. A bit of garlic, yeah, you're right, yeah. Garlic does not go amiss in any meal. A bit of garlic, some sweet potato fries, I really want them. I'm struggling so much to think of any form of a vegetable, but I know that sweet potato is a vegetable, so I'm like, mm, maybe, maybe not. I'm really like, oh, cabbage. Yes. Yes. We can have like a coleslaw with it. Perfect. See guys, cabbage and onions are great on a boat because they last forever. Potatoes. potatoes last pretty well. Yeah, but we've have had some smelly had potato some incidences because it's been really hot. Yeah, cabbages, cabbages, onion, garlic, are yeah. like just they just don't die. Yeah. And even when they're slightly dodgy, you can still fry up a dodgy onion. Yeah. And it's basically the same. Much. It comes out the same. Yeah. I'm glad we we managed to like resurrect this dinner that was going to be very very bland. We actually managed to do something with it. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Talking yourself up here, Master Chef. Let's. Uh, I'd like to point out as well that a lot of this butter actually isn't it's I'm not gonna eat all this butter it's a lot of it's just not actually gonna end up on my plate so you might think there's a lot of butter but it tastes absolutely delicious it's really really tender Beautiful. It's like a nice white flesh. Mmm, it is. White, not fishy. Infused with garlic. A little bit on the bony side, but like not if you scrape it gently off. 